Hello and welcome to this video on indicators. Indicators are commonly used in titration reactions to allow us to see the end point. Indicators are weak acids where the weak acid has a different colour from its conjugate base. For example, in this reaction here, our weak acid may be yellow, whereas our conjugate base, ion minus, may be pink. For an indicator to be useful, it really needs to have a very clear colour difference between the acid and its conjugate base. Since this is an equilibrium reaction, we are able to write an equilibrium constant K, in this case KIN for indicator. This is H plus multiplied by IN minus divided by HIN. H2O is ignored as it is a liquid and therefore it has a value of 1 in the equilibrium constant. This equation can be rearranged to find the pH at which we will see the colour change. If we rearrange the equation to have concentration of IN minus divided by concentration of HIN equals KIN divided by concentration of H plus. At the point at which the colour will change, so at the point where we have a 50-50 mix, this will equal 1 and therefore the PKIN will equal the pH. In reality, to be able to have a distinguishable colour change, we can only really see this when the difference between the concentration in the conjugate base and the acid is a factor of 10. This means that our pH change is usually over a pH of 2, so we have PKIN plus or minus 1. If you have a look at page 20 in your data book, there is a range of indicators and their pH colour changes. To be able to use an indicator, you need to be able to know where the end point of your titration is. The end point of the titration is where the pH changes rapidly. This is the point where you want your pH change of your indicator to lie. If you use a strong acid and a strong base, then the end point of the titration when we're adding alkali to the acid will be at pH 7 in the centre. You would then want an indicator with a pH change between around about pH 6 and pH 8. This is where you want your colour change to take place. If you use a strong acid and a weak base, then the end point for your reaction will be slightly lower at around about pH 5. For a weak acid and a strong base, then the end point will be higher than 7 at around about pH 9. If you are to use a weak acid and a weak base, there is no end point where you would get a clear colour change with an indicator. Using the titration curves and the information on data book page 20, pause the video and try and find the most suitable indicator for each reaction. For this first reaction, nitric acid plus sodium hydroxide, we have a strong acid and a strong base. That means our end point is 7. If you look at page 20, you'll find there are two suitable indicators, bromothymol blue or phenyl red. If we use nitric acid and ammonia, we have a strong acid and a weak base. This means that our end point will be around about pH 5. If you look on page 20, there are again two suitable indicators, methyl red or litmus. For ethanoic acid and ammonia are both weak, therefore there is no indicator that we can use for that reaction. Propanoic acid and lithium hydroxide is a weak acid and a strong base, so our end point will be around about 9, and you could use phenylthaline or thymol blue. If you were to be looking at exam questions, they may give you a range to have a look at and then find a specific indicator. I hope that you find this video on indicators useful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me at Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for regular updates on new videos. Thank you.